we all different anyway in kind of a way in you know in life uh, we 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 different you know how I perform uh, it draws attention you know from people probably the cause they say I have advantage you know in high testosterone of course I do have it so what <laughs> So I have a very deep respect for the sporting world, particularly when it comes to athletics. So I want to approach this topic in a fair and respectful manner. Like I'm not trying to be a sensationalist or a controversialist or anything like that. I also have a very deep respect for science. So I actually have a degree in medical sciences. So I want to make sure that my opinion is coming from a place of logic and science fact based evidence so i hope that you can bear that in mind before you form an opinion and if you know yourself that you're uh, the easily triggered kind of person and this is kind of a topic that's just a bit too sensitive for you let me just tell you now this might not be the video for you so you might want to watch something else <laughs> join me on my journey to 500 subscribers we will get there amen yes i have every faith Carlos semenya two-time track olympic champion so it's been ruled by a swiss high court that Carlos semenya cannot compete in the 400 meter to a mile distance running unless she underwent medical intervention to lower her naturally high testosterone levels now i've actually been following this story since pretty much like her debut into like the mainstream international sporting kind of world i found it, her story really interesting the fact that her sexuality or her sex was brought into question the incredible speed at which she runs at is actually quite, if you watch her on the field or the track rather, it's actually quite phenomenal. Also followed the story of where she was banned, um, I think in 2016, but then that was then revoked. This is now the most recent ruling. They've stuck to their guns. The World Athletics have stuck to their guns. And I saw some comments on social media and yeah, I, I was really taken aback and actually quite irritated by some of these comments. So let me actually read some of these comments to you and then we'll come back. The policing of Carlos Semenya's body is rooted in anti-blackness as much as it's rooted in homophobia and transphobia. She is too black and too fast. Carlos will be forced to alter her body to make slower white women more comfortable. All she wants to do is run. That's it. And while someone like Michael Phelps is celebrated for his physicality, Carlos Semenya is punished. Ask yourself, why? The decision to discriminate, as admitted, is a symptom of racism and sexism as a societal disease. Semenya's blackness and deviance from cis-heteronormativity, whoa, what a word, are seen as a threat to be policed. Yet these same abilities are celebrated in the likes of Phelps. Lauded as a biomechanical freak of nature, wrote this last year and is still woefully relevant. What's happening to Carter Semenya is so disgustingly unfair. She's literally being punished for the way her body naturally is, based on outdated and racist assumptions of what constitutes womanhood. I'm so sad for her. This makes no sense. Carter Semenya is a woman, born female, and her natural body hormones are illegal according to World Athletics and Swiss Supreme Court. It's legal to take drugs to increase hormone levels, but mandated to take drugs to lower them. Right, so I have a, a massive issue with all of those comments, absolutely everything to do with each and every one of those. I will get in depth in my explanation. I think to understand and to form an opinion on this, you really need, need to understand the details and the facts. I can see in articles that are being published about her, very conveniently, the fact that she has a high level t of testosterone is just like swept past as if it's just like it doesn't matter when it like it really does like i just feel like saying to these people he didn't read the protocol he hasn't read the bill he doesn't know his stuff but don't worry jojo is here we're gonna go and take a little lesson in biology 101 <laughs> so it has been noted that uh semenya's higher level of testosterone is down to her hyper androgenism which is actually a very rare medical condition. So many people have classed her as being intersex. Intersex is actually like a wider umbrella term for a number of different categories of people, which is now commonly known as DSD, which is the difference or disorder of sex differences. Now, Semenya has what is called 46XY DSD. So people with DSD don't develop along the typical gender lines when it comes to their hormone production, their genes, their reproductive organs, and thus they tend to share a mixture of female and male characteristics. As we know, biological females have the chromosomes XX, 
biological males have the chromosomes X, Y. That is in every single cell of your body. You cannot change your chromosomes. You cannot change your genes. That is the rule when it comes to biological sex. In Semenya's case, she has what is characterized as 46 XY DSD. So biologically, she is male. However, as we see with many intersex individuals, when they are born, there is usually a discussion between the doctor and the parents of how they want to raise their child. They will choose the sex um, that they want to raise their child in, usually going off of external genitalia. So many people with XYDSD usually have internal male genitalia, the testes, whereas the external would be a, I don't know if I can even say the word, would be external female genitalia. So they will grow up experiencing male puberty, thus producing very high levels of testosterone for a biological woman. In Semenya's case, she was raised as female, she identifies as female, so of course, she is a woman, but her biology is different to that of a typical woman. So there's been like a lot of question about whether testosterone really does make a difference in sport. And if it's just something you can just say casually, oh, she just has a bit of testosterone, what's the big deal? Let's really see if it makes a difference, shall we? When we go through puberty, this is the time in adolescence where we are developing into our adult bodies. A lot of things change for women and for men, very different things happen to our bodies. So with male puberty, a number of hormones are released in all sorts of different quantities. Most people know testosterone as the main male hormone. I would like to point out that women do also produce testosterone, but at very, very different levels. I'll probably put like a chart or something here to show the levels at which, how different the levels of testosterone between men and women are. It's actually quite a massive amount. So how does that affect the male and female body when it comes to sport? So I'll just bring a few examples. So men have a higher oxygen carrying capacity. They also have longer and larger bones. They have a higher ratio of muscle mass to weight, which in turn means they can accumulate greater speed and acceleration. They also have a large proportion of type two muscle fibers. In the case of women now the way that we're structured is our ligaments are actually more lax and more fragile than that of our male counterparts which actually leads to more musculoskeletal problems and injuries you'll see women actually get injured at a higher rate than men women also hold on to our body fat more than men it's way harder for a woman to lose fat than it is for men i mean that just goes down so we hold fat in our breastuses and our bum and our hips and you know it's actually a funny story about uh venus and serena williams everyone knows venus and serena especially serena they're at the top of tennis like they are legends within the tennis world they were so confident about their ability that they actually said that they'd beat anyone any man ranked under 200 even then they knew they couldn't beat the top 200 men so there was actually this guy he was ranked 203 in the world he actually challenged them to a match surprisingly or maybe not surprisingly he beat both of them 203rd ranked man in the world beat Serena Williams and even after that she conceded and said that she probably wouldn't be able to beat the top 350 men in the world so there are very clear differences in the, in the ability of men and women in sport. It's exactly why it's so important that sport is segregated by the sexes. So the best women can compete against the best women and the best men can compete against the best men. Makes things equal. So that's been Biology 101. I'll see you again soon. I you know I see the argument again and again about Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt both being men who have been dubbed as freaks of nature for how their bodies are so well made for their sport. In fact, Usain Bolt hit scientifically his body's actually not supposed to run as fast as it, as it does. I think it's down to his like scoliosis or things like that. I don't know exactly the ins and outs of how his like the mechanical function of his body and how he's able to run as fast as he does. Michael Phelps, his wingspan is actually uh, longer than his height. I think his wingspan is about six foot seven, which is crazy. <laughs> he also has size 14 feet. He has longer uh, toes, which is a bit gross, but helps him in the water. His capacity to hold on to lactic, lactic acid is very unique as well. So I see this uh, argument a lot about, well, Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt, they have a, a clear uh, physiological advantage over the people in their sport. Why aren't they called out? Okay, so Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt are both XY typical biological men. It is very plausible for another man in who knows 10 years, 50 years, 100 years to be born with even more exceptional physiological advantages than Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt. It's how nature works, natural selection. 
it is very possible for another man, XY typical man, to be born with even more uh, physiological advantages than these two men. Records are beaten all the time by people who are just faster, stronger, more physiologically advanced than others. It, it happens all the time, that's how nature works. I've pointed out the advantages that testosterone through male puberty over accumulation of years can have on the body. As I've shown the chart of women and men, their differences in testosterone, it is biologically impossible for a typical XX woman to release the amount of testosterone naturally as Casa Semenya. This just cannot happen. So that argument is null and void, I'm sorry, it just, I really, it really does annoy me seeing that argument. It's just, it's apples and oranges. It's, just, it's, the, it's not the same. So World Athletics, they actually came up with a statement saying, World Athletics has acknowledged that its regulations were discriminatory, but said they were necessary to preserve a level playing field in women's events. Intersex athletes with testosterone in the male range have an unfair advantage in lean muscle mass, strength and oxygen carrying capacity. The lowest level in the male testosterone range is four times greater than the highest level in the women's range. They acknowledge themselves that it is discriminatory, the regulations they've had to put on intersex athletes. But let's be real, from birth, intersex individuals, they don't have the easiest time functioning in a binary world. So of course, when it comes to professional sports, it's gonna be a bit tricky as well. That is a massive thing to say. Even at the lowest testosterone levels a man can naturally produce, that is still four times greater than the highest a, a woman can naturally produce herself. Like if sport wasn't segregated, women would have a pretty hard time getting those medals, okay? <laughs> I've also seen arguments that Semenya has been specifically pinpointed. Semenya is not alone. Intersex athletes are actually very much overrepresented in sporting events. Now, let me let me break this down. Let me break this down. I don't think many people realize, but in the Olympics 2016 in Rio, I can't remember which event it was exactly, um, but the top three winners, gold, silver, and bronze, all went to people who had XY, DSD. It wasn't just Semenya, it was the silver medalist. Margaret Wambui, she is from Kenya. And then there was a Burundi athlete who won bronze. Francine Neon Samba, I'm sorry if I, if I uh, butchered those names, I, I really don't mean to. You know, the silver and bronze, they might have won oppositely actually. But all three of those women have the exact same condition. You might be wondering how common is XYDSD? So according to some figures that I found, XYDSD actually occurs in one out of 20,000 births. Now, if my maths is correct, that's about 0.005% chance of being born with this. 0.005% of people in the world have XYDSD, that's how rare it is. I'm actually gonna be referencing a paper that was actually really good. I can't remember the name of it right now. I'll probably stick it on the side and I'll put it in the description below. It's actually a really good read. If you want to understand truly how the Swiss court came to their decision and like, you know, the ins and outs of things, this is the paper that I'm referencing a lot throughout this video. So now if we look over the last 25 years, let's see how prevalent DSD athletes are in these sporting com competitions. In the last 25 years, they have won 19 global athletic championships and at least 30 medals, that is gold to bronze, for the 400 meter to 1500 meter events. So that was actually worked out to be a 1,700 times overrepresentation at podium level. Like, that number is insane. 1,700 times overrepresentation. <laughs> There's a reason why artificial testosterone is banned in the World Doping Agency. Like when it comes to athletics, they, they go so hard for, they go so hard to make it a fair and equal competition. Like they do not tolerate doping at all. They are not easy on doping at all. I think out of everybody in the world, I think Russia knows this. If anyone remembers the scandal that happened to Russia in 2015, there was like a nationwide scandal of uh, doping on a national level. It was so bad that they were banned from major sporting events for years. To this day, they're still banned. Since 2015, they're still banned. They will be banned in the next Olympics and the Olympics after that. 2024, 2024, they will still be banned. Like, do you know how harsh that is? A whole country and Russia is massive. Now I'm saying all that to say that this is not a new kind of issue as the media is trying to paint it out to be. I feel like it's become such a big issue and particularly on Semenya because number one, trans and intersex issues have become more mainstream and more like pop culture kind of things to talk about in the last maybe three to five years. Also black women have somehow taken this upon us as some kind of threat. How 
in athletics how like that actually really bothers me like out of if you look okay if you look at the world records for both men and women in track black people overwhelmingly dominate the world records like how are black women being suppressed in the track category of athletics how the fastest woman in the world is a black woman the fastest man in the world is a black man if we go back to even Hitler's Germany, black people were still winning then. And world athletics have actually been concerned with intersex athletes since the 1930s. All right, I just moved my camera a bit. The angle is a bit funny. <laughs> so I believe the first intersex athlete was actually around during the 1936 Olympics. That was actually based in Hitler's Germany. So there was an intersex woman by the name of Dora Ratian who later transitioned to a man. To be honest, she then later ad admitted that she believed she was misgendered at birth, so a bit confusing. Anyway, she competed as a woman and she won all these different medals, but because of media criticism and her outward appearance, she was literally roasted alive. The media was incessant on her. Her own home country were dogging her out. She was stripped of all her places. Her medals were taken from her. She was basically just dumped into obscurity. And I don't think she ever had any sort of public apology or any sort of resolution to what happened. So that was then, let's move forward. Duty Chand, I'm sorry again if I'm mispronouncing her name. One of very few Indian women who were able to compete in the 100 meter event. She is a, an XY DSD person. She was stripped of her titles as well, unfortunately. I think she's in the process of appealing. And most interestingly enough, we have the Casa Semenya of the 80s, which no one seems to talk about, a Spanish athlete. She was the most famous intersex elite athlete of her time. And she was praised throughout her country, throughout the world, for her in her sport, in her event. But then when it was found out through, uh, I think it was gender testing at the time that she was in fact, she had XY DSD. She not only lost her place in her team, she lost her medals, she lost her scholarship, she lost her fiance, she lost her privacy. And she, she later on went to say she lost her sense of self. After that, she later went on to be a professor and is now actually an advisor to the International Olympic Committee. And what's even more surprising is that she went through all of that. All her status was stripped from her. Her whole identity was stripped from her. And she's on this committee. When I was first reading this, I initially assumed that she'd be in favor of forecaster Semenya. But interestingly enough, she's actually in favor of the Swiss High Ruling Court's decision. She fully backs their decision. She's completely in favor of limits on testosterone when it comes to XY DSD people. Speaking of the IOC, the IOC actually enacted testosterone-based regulations for trans athletes in 2016, as trans women retain some inherent anatomical and biological advantages. The IOC also announced that they're gonna be doing some mixed gendered events in the next Olympics. Um, you know, I'll have an open mind, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's what I say on that. <laughs> I mean, this even goes on to trans athletes. I do wanna make a distinction between intersex athletes and trans athletes. They are very different cases, yeah. The issues do kind of overlap in a sense, but they are different sets of people. I also don't think it's fair to say that people are being transphobic to Semenya. She's not a trans woman. Why are people putting that label on her? But this does move further along into trans athletes. So I'm kind of moving away from Casa Semenya and more into the, the discussion around trans athletes. You know, I don't think the issue of trans men in sport is talked about at all. <laughs> like there is a very clear underrepresentation of trans men in sports. I mean, we've seen many times in sport, not just in athletics, but where trans women, there's been issues with trans women in sport. Is it MMA? I think it's MMA. Fallon Fox, she got heavily criticized for when she actually broke her opponent's skull during a match. She was dragged through the media for that. I actually think the athletics community is actually trying really hard to make things fair for everybody involved, whether it's uh, biological XX women or uh, intersex athletes. I really do feel like they're trying to do everything to make things fair and a level playing ground. There are other sports, maybe because I follow um, other sporting events like pro lifting, they do not care <laughs> when it comes to intersex and trans athletes. They are ruthless. There was this uh, trans athlete, 
Mary Gregory. She won titles in women's deadlifting, squatting and bench press. I think there was maybe one more in the raw competition and she made a world record that was actually so crazy. So much so that the pro lifting have stripped her of all her titles and they came out and said, our rules and the basis of separating genders for competition are based on physiological classification rather than identification. On the basis of all information presented to the board of directors for this particular case, the conclusion made is that the correct physiological classification is male. Now, this is a case where they picked one individual athlete and made it about them. In the case of the athletics, if you look at the report and the case study that I've, I've been referencing, they did not just make it about Semenya, they've made it about intersex athletes as a whole, about trans athletes as a whole. There have also been athletes who have decided to undergo uh, medical inter intervention to lower their testosterone and have still been able to compete. They're not as publicized, of course, because that's not what the media is wants to perpetuate. It's kind of hard to wrap up this video. I don't know how to exactly end it, but I hope that you have understood where I'm coming from. I hope that you understand the points that I'm getting to. This is not a, a clean cut kind of solution. I do believe that intersex people and trans people have a right to compete in athletics. However, it's not an easy kind of route to make sure that it's equal for everybody. We have to make sure it's fair. It has to be fair, okay? Women have fought for the rights for fair competition. And I think that is only right that we maintain it. I think I will leave it, leave it on this note of actual um, female athletes that have had a say on this case. Because, you know, who am I to be talking about all this? I'm just a girl on the internet. But yeah, I'll leave you with this note and I'll see you guys in the next video. Fighting to the finish line is in Paula Radcliffe's DNA. But now she is battling to protect the future of women's sport. She says it is under threat from political correctness and transgender athletes. They think somehow they're afforded another right that everybody else doesn't have. Um, and, and that's what I don't see. You have to look at what you're doing in relation to the fairness of how that impacts everybody else around you. You can't just say, well, I feel like this, so I'm going to go into that sport and never mind everybody else that's already in that sport and is, is, is in that category. I'm just going to do what's the best thing for me. I, don't th I think that's a, a kind of selfish way to, to look at it. Other former athletes have also spoken out. Martina Navratilova, Kelly Holmes and Sharon Davis have aired their views and since received abusive messages online. It's very dangerous because there are vulnerable athletes out there who can't make that distinction between what's reality and what's not and what somebody really truthfully stands by and what somebody's just been a troll. Semenya is not transgender, but some believe she's so dominant because of a condition she has called differences in sexual development. That means she has naturally higher levels of testosterone. It could also affect Semenya's closest rival, Francine Neon Saba. The Burundi runner won silver behind her at the Rio Olympics, but revealed this week that she also has the same condition. It's a number of athletes and could be a growing number who, who have those elevated levels of testosterone. And it's not just about that either. It's the fact that essentially you have a, a body that has almost gone through male puberty uh, and is stronger, physiological differences, bone mass, the strength, not having to deal with periods, not having to worry about um, managing your menstrual cycle around competitions. Those ramifications for what it means in their sports and for what it means for the future of female sport and also what it will do in terms of the whole transgender question and will it open the door up there to, to transgender actually being able to say, you know what, we don't need to bring our levels down either. We don't need to have any kind of surgery. We can just identify how we feel and then we can just come in and compete in women's sport and that would be the death of women's sport.